It is the Undercard Season 3, Episode 13, Collision Course. This is the final episode before the finale. And there's a couple things I need to cover before we get into the show. Really quick, just so you know, the finale has a theme around 2020. And it's the perfect theme for this crazy year. It has to be, and this is the big announcement you've all been waiting for, it has to be lockdown. That's right. Every match is going to be in a steel cage next week in the finale for the first time ever in the undercard. I've been waiting for the right moment to do a cage show, and I think lockdown is just the perfect title and the perfect theme for the finale of this season. So uh, tune in for that. The final match, the main event, by the way, will be Brock Lesnar defending his title against somebody. Who will that somebody be? I think we'll find out here at the end of this show. Our campaign went well. Apparently. We had a viral campaign, I guess. <laughs> Hashtag undercard on Twitter. Uh, starting off the show with Jerry Lynn versus the Sandman. Points don't really matter. This is all for the glory and the bragging rights. So I'm really excited for the finale. I hope it's a great show. This has been an interesting season. I think it went well. There's a couple things we're going to have to adjust for season four. Um, especially around that junior title. And I guess we'll discuss that during the finale episode so that it'll make more sense. But for now, Fight. we've got some wrestling action brought to you live on Twitch and later posted on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube slash underdog iq 22 elbow to the back of the head followed up by a leg jerry lynn and sandman similar level of expertise they may have even faced each other before i'm not really sure but i know these two are gonna get along like that right there uh they're not gonna get along that's what i'm talking about headlock with the punches Sandman gonna stay dirty. Jerry Lynn gonna try to do something to make the fans happy. I don't think Sandman knows where he is because he's probably still drunk. Reversal off that power bomb attempt. Jerry Lynn misses the kick though into the corner again. Is he gonna look for that DDT? He can't. Can't look at anything. He got poked in the eyes. He's blind now. Uh, this match is set for a 30 minute time limit as all singles matches and non-titles matches are but we do have a unlimited tag title match here One, later in the show two, kendo stick is out three, it's in play four, we want to see it i've been six, waiting season after seven, season to see somebody eight, actually use a nine, weapon ten, and sam man is just grabbing everything four, he can brain buster on the outside four, three, somebody's gonna get counted out this match was almost over right there, and then he's chasing him down with that steel chair. Referee could be him. Ooh, reverse drop. The steel is in play. Don't land on that chair. It's not going to feel good in the morning. Drop kick to the back by Jerry Lynn. The expertise coming into play now. What's the strategy? DDT. Just have to keep hitting him with move after move because Sandman is a tough guy. Say what you want about him. You may not like him. You may not even respect him. But you got to acknowledge he's got that toughness. Scoop slam and he slammed his body hard on the mat with that one. Working on the leg now. Sandman trying to slow down the pace of this match because it's been all Jerry Lynn going for the cradle pile better. And he hits it five minutes into the match and it could be all over. But no, Sandman had other thoughts in mind as he drives the elbow to the back of the skull. Following it up. Strike battle. Who's going to get the edge in this first contest here? 
This is collision course, and these two are colliding right now on the undercard. Low blow. Ding dong. Dinner's ready. <laughs> Start the Christmas carols. Oh boy! Ran right into that corner. A little bit dizzy, but he uh, was aware of where he was. Got that low blow and neck breaker in the center of the ring. What's he going for here? Fenton splash. Jerry Lynn fires back now. Going for a big kick. This is fast paced action. If you blink, you could miss it. Ding dong again with those low blows constantly and the referee's just going to let it happen because when these two guys are in the ring, you got to let them do what they want to do. Two count there off of the power bomb. Karana now trying to get a three count, but I think Sandman was in the ropes a little bit. May have reached out a toe. All he has to do is touch those ropes for safety. Drop kick again. Gary Lynn. Pile driver! Sandman hits a pile driver of his own. And he's taunting because he knows that's insult to injury when you use a move that your opponent is known for. Jerry Lynn, of course, known for that cradle pile driver finisher and just tosses Sandman between the ropes. Outside we go. It's going to be a brawl for all. Back in the ring. Maybe not. Jerry Lynn wanted to just end this one clean in the center. That way he has bragging rights when he goes home. Leg drop from the top. And Sandman's going to rain down with the fist. Knuckles meeting the face of Jerry Lynn as the punishment ensues here. White Russian leg sweep. And that is not it. Two and a half. Two and a half. I can't believe Jerry Lynn kicked out of that one. Each guy hitting their finisher. What's it going to take to end this match? Atomic Drop. Both guys so tough. They've been in this business for year after year. And this is the year of 2020. Anything can happen. It's been pure chaos in real life. And here in the undercard, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Right! Russian leg sweep. He stole his finisher there. Excuse me. The white Russian leg sweep. Jerry Lynn used it against Sandman. Sleeper drop! Both men are down for a while, though. Sandman looks like it took a lot out of him. I was trying to say there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. A lot of work goes into the show, so I hope the fans at home are enjoying it. I know it's pure craziness here. Drop kick running straight at him. It hits the mark and hopefully does the damage it needed to do. Gets knocked down though. Gary Lynn looking really good in this match. As he always does. He's always impressive. I'm glad he was here. But he's busted open. He's bleeding. And he's not going to slow down for a second. You better believe he doesn't mind a little cut here and there. This is Jerry Lynn we're talking about. A legendary performer. And now he's trying to take out. Sandman once and for all! Cradle pile driver right on the blood stain! Oh no! Sandman kicking out, covered in Jerry Lynn's blood now. Feeling the fury! Feeling the pain! Rakes the eye out, out of desperation and a pile driver of his own! Sandman taunting again and again! But I think he's got to stop playing games and start getting serious. White Russian leg sweep again. Stealing the finisher of Sandman. Tilt a whirl. This one's not over yet. Somehow they've hit each other with their own moves and each other's moves. And it's just never going to end. Ding dong. Right to the face. <laughs> That's when the carolers knock on your door. Board Buster face first onto the mat here. This is wrestling at its best. What a contest we have in the first match. Tombstone! That's gonna be it. What is he doing? He's picking him back up. Oh, they collided here on collision course. There it was. That was a car crash if I've ever seen one. 18 and a half. As the clock ticks down, I get worried if we're going to see another draw here late in the season. That would be disappointing for me and I think for the fans because I love to see clean endings 
I love three counts in the center of the ring, and we might get one here. He's trying to drag Sandman's body out of the ropes. One, two, off of the finisher, and somehow, some way, Sandman kicks out of yet another finisher. Holy shit, what a spot! Oh my goodness, diving out of the ropes into the barricade now, and again on the outside with the Russian leg sweep, and Jerry Lynn is just pouring blood out of his face. The Crimson Mask has been donned here in episode 13. Wait a minute. Suplex on the chair. Suplex on the steel chair from behind. Russian leg sweep in the corner. Jerry Lynn's done that before, but it didn't end the match. Elbow's going to follow it up. Is that enough? Sam has kicked out of everything he can here. How much the same man have left we know he's fueled by the alcohol we know all the pain is numbed dumps down again and he's hyped about it but he's gonna pick him up because he doesn't think it's gonna be enough bulldog Gary Lynn is gassed these two are so even and they've hit each other with every move under the sun what what is gonna happen here bio driver this is the craziest match we've seen in the undercard. Oh my goodness, this is a barn burner, dude. I don't even know what's happening anymore. White Russian leg sweep, but Sandman doesn't want to end it. He's upset now, he's pissed off that he can't beat Jerry Lynn. He's starting to doubt himself and you can tell it by the, sh the strikes he was throwing there. Cradle pile driver, and he's not gonna be able to kick out this time. Holy cow, that was finisher mania, dude. I can't believe what I've just seen. I'm glad we started off the show with pure nonsense. Holy cow. 89%? That's it. You mean we can't get a little bit higher than that? Just a little bit higher. <laughs> Next up, we have the Tag Team Championship on the line. There is no time limit for this match. And it's we've seen a lot of these tag matches go on for 30 minutes. And a lot of all our draws this season have been from tag matches like this but there can't be a draw here there has to be a winner can the good brothers end the season with the titles around their waist here against brock lesnar and colt cabana brock lesnar of course is currently the undercard champion so you know i mean they're facing the top guy and the reason the good brothers were selected was because they had a better record earlier in the season than any other team. So, I mean, it was only fair to give them this final shot, even though they didn't win their last match. Which, of course, like I said, went to a draw. Into the corner we go. Brock Lesnar's going to start with our strikes to the head, knocking down Carl Anderson. Of course, Luke Gallows, his partner, is there in the corner on the blue side, the left side of your screen, and Brock Lesnar is just going to start going to work early with that belly-to-belly. -belly. This is what we expect, a bunch of quick suplex city. Suplexes for everybody. And Brock Lesnar starting early with some strikes. Of course, he was uh, in the UFC. He knows how to throw a punch. And he's just going to toss Luke Gallows outside of the ring. But wait a minute. Luke Gallows gets the better of Brock Lesnar here on the outside. Caught by the Kimura. But you can't tap out if you're outside of the ring. So this is okay. I mean, Luke Gallows is going to take the pain here. But I suggest he get back into the ring somehow. There is no count out. Cole Cabana is going to start making his way over and see what the heck is going on. He just threw an elbow at the turnbuckle. <laughs> Cole Cabana taking a gut and getting knocked down. What the heck is going on? Enzagari knocks down Luke Gallows here in the corner. Anderson now together. Teamwork on the outside. Cole Cabana didn't sell that for one second. He doesn't care. He says, hey, I'm a champion. I don't have to do anything but win. 
And Brock Lesnar now distracted by both members of the Good Brothers. May not be able to retain that gold if he gets distracted too much here, though. A lot of work to be in a 2v1 situation, even for a champion like Brock Lesnar. You know, the numbers game can come into play here as anything can happen in these tag matches. All you gotta do is catch somebody off guard and hit him with a big move like that! Anderson with the big knees. Straight to the face of Cole Cabana, who's striking back and doesn't look like he's taking any damage here. Maybe Cole Cabana's been training with Lesnar behind the scenes. I mean, that would make a lot of sense to make himself stronger. Oh boy, and those big, extra large gloves raining down on the face. Jabbing! There's one suplex for your mother. And a place buster, flapjack style move there. Followed up by a neck breaker. The team of the Good Brothers working together, looking like they've got their plan in place. Double move to Lesnar. They like to spam that. They've been spamming that move all season, but Lesnar from behind. Holy cow, just turned him inside out. Suplex City is here, and it's shitty. STO takes down Luke Gallows, the larger man. F5 on the shoulders. Lesnar doesn't care who you are or how big you are, but it looks like that move may have taken something out of Lesnar as they just caught an elbow to the face. Carl Anderson getting the better of Lesnar for a second, but it wasn't enough because we're talking about one of the best wrestlers in the business. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Brock Lesnar is the champion! For a reason, and that was it right there. Cole Cabana now looking for something as he got tagged in. Legal man, Bulldog in the corner. Meets up with Carl Anderson, takes a couple elbows, but he's going to fight his way through the corner here of his opponents, trying to hold on to the gold. Wow! Huge spot there with the inverted superplex. Elbow crashes down. Drop kick to follow up. Cole Cabana looking great in this match. Probably better than I've ever seen him look in this whole season. But unfortunately, one misstep is all it takes. And he just ran into a double move now. A double move by Colt and Brock with that suplex. Straight style. Strike for strike. Gallows gets the edge. Gallows now with the uppercut. Lesnar going for another German. Bounced off the ropes. Luke Gallows had no choice but to walk all the way to his corner. Power bomb! Cover! Hook of the leg! And it was almost over there. Luke Gallows with a big move. Driving down. Anderson ran right into that big body of Lesnar. Carl Anderson trying to make his girlfriend or his wife proud. His hot Asian wife trying to make her proud here. As she's probably at home watching. Fist to the face of Lesnar. Lesnar's got a hot wife too. Maybe that's what the grudge is all about. Whose wife is hotter? I mean, Lesnar's is, but... That's up to somebody else to decide, I think. Tag. Colt is now the legal man. This is for the championship, and there is no time limit. Backdrop there in the corner. Gallows working against both people. And it might be paying off here as it gets a big move to both guys. Cole Cabana wants to disturb. He wants to disrupt the plans of the Good Brothers here now. Colt and Gallows with the choke slam on the outside. But Cole Cabana working on the inside. And this has divided. Roll up, but I don't, I don't think Cole Cabana's the legal man. I, I think Brock Lesnar was tagged in. Wait, no, he wasn't. What the heck is going on? I think it's Gallows and Cole Cabana here. This is so fast-paced, it's hard to keep up sometimes. And now Lesnar gets tagged in. And Luke Gallows looked like he had something in his eye. There are no rules. F5! Lesnar takes down both guys by himself. Putting in the work, German. Big time suplex turning inside out. The contender here, but a quick roll up. 
Not going to matter. Wow. He was in the rope. Anderson on the shoulders. F5. F5 to Anderson. But Gallo strikes back with a big power bomb. And he wasn't even legal. And the ref let it happen. Power slam. Nice counter move there by one half. Good brothers. Carl Anderson going full speed ahead with that one-legged drop kick. And now he's going to tag to his partner here. They might do it. They might reclaim the gold in this match right now. Off the ropes. What's he doing? Catches him from behind. That time he didn't have to go all the way to the top. Dragging the body of Luke Gallows towards the center of the ring. But he gets caught. Kick to the face. Body splash! One, two! Lesnar was there to break up the pin. And all Good Brothers have to do is separate Colt and Brock at five! God damn, Brock Lesnar has been F5-ing everybody he can. But it just seems like somehow, some way, the Good Brothers are staying alive in this match. Legal tag made. The champions chasing down the challengers. Double move. Carl Anderson's in trouble. Oh my god. He might tap out here. He might tap out. If Gallows can't break up the submission, it could be over. He might tap out. And he did. God dang it, dude. The submission after submission there at the end. And Brock and Cole end the season as your tag team champions. Because, of course, Brock Lesnar has to defend his undercard championship in the main event of the finale next week. So it's unfortunate. If Brock Lesnar wins that main event in the finale he'll be our first ever double champion winner so that that's a kind of interesting statistic right there uh give me two seconds before the next match okay sorry i had to refresh hello i'm still here we're still here the show must go on becky lynch versus molly holly I think Becky Lynch has um, probably been the number two female on the roster besides Tennille, I would say. And it just seems unfortunate that Molly Holly hasn't really had a big victory, but tonight could be her night. Unfortunately, points are no longer a factor, so the win won't really get her anywhere except for a place in my heart, <laughs> I guess you could say. Ooh, going for an early roll-up, and the ref was ready, but Becky Lynch was too. And she just powered out of that one. Molly Holly trying to start this match with a quick victory, and that would send a statement to the entire locker room if she could beat Becky Lynch quick. Because I think anytime you're up against a superstar of Becky Lynch's caliber, it's an uphill climb. Say what you want about... You know, Molly Holly has all the experience. She's the veteran. She's been in this business for years. But Becky Lynch is probably one of the top female wrestlers of all time. And she's done it so graciously. And he's the man. Ooh, running kick there. From behind, Saito style. Becky Lynch starting that suplex game. We know how explosive she can be with those big, quick moves. And I think the pace when it picks up is in the favor of Becky Lynch. And I would not want to get into a brawl style match. If we're getting into like a fight, a brawl, then I think Molly Holly gets the edge there. She was a former hardcore champion, so. And Becky Lynch starting to work on that elbow. Trying to weaken the arm. Looking for a disarmer here later in the match, hopefully. Molly Holly again with this roll-up. And it's not working. <laughs> and it might just frustrate Becky Lynch. 
does it again in the center one. He keeps catching her with it. Maybe it might work. I don't think doing the same move over and over is that great of an idea, though. Becky Lynch uh, looks a little bit slow here, being more strategic, playing more carefully. Irish whip. Come on! Best floater! There it is. Out of nowhere. Catches Molly Holly, and Molly Holly is looking for Come a on. counter. Oh boy. But only found a big suplex. He's looking for something. She keeps finding herself in trouble. Cartwheel elbow! The signature move, but Becky Lynch fires right back. Breaks up the submission. Standing tall. In the center of the ring and spinning her around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Molly Holly. Trying to get a big victory here at the end of the season. She thinks she deserves a spot on the card in the finale, but only time will tell for that. Exploder again. The signature move of Becky Lynch. Not enough to take out Molly Holly here yet. Molly Holly is very tough. What a beautiful drop kick there. Those up top. Elbow, but she missed as Becky Lynch moved out of the way and hits an elbow of her own. Nice sequence there by both ladies. Break up. Holly Holly looking a little bit tired, a little bit exhausted. Every second this match goes on, I think it's going to start leaning into the favor of Becky Lynch. Again, uh, youth is an important factor here in this match. Come on! Bending the arm backwards! The disarmor is locked in. Can Molly Holly escape? And somehow she slipped out there. Could have tapped out at any second, but she just managed to slip the arm out. Gets hit by the back splatter and kicks out at two and a half. Big moves. Take down. Becky Lynch breathing heavy now. All those big moves took something out of her too. Saito style. Both women down for a long time. Molly Holly bringing the match back to the center. Pick them while they're down. That's what you gotta do. Spinning neck breaker. Adjusting those gloves. Making sure everything's in order. Uh oh. Caught by a clothesline. Caught by an elbow. Back and forth, spinning around. Becky Lynch was not sure what she wanted to do there. Oh my goodness! Wow! Oh! He turned right into that drop kick. Took a couple boots to the face. Is she gonna tap out? The referee's there. Check. Molly Holly's not gonna give up that easy. We've had already two great matches. Could this be a third here? Elbows. Knocking down Becky. Molly Holly. Trying to slow this down and turn the page. Submission now by Molly Holly. He's got her in the center. What's it gonna be? Bulldog! Old school style, there's some classic Mid-2000s wrestling for you. <laughs> oh boy. Stunner! She's the man and that's why. Right there. Some people called Becky Lynch the stone cold of the women's division. 
but she's not going to be much if she gets beat. Oh boy, that was close there. Stun her again. Come on. She's got her now. She's got her now! And Molly Holly had no choice there. The arm was bent backwards from that disarmor submission. And Becky Lynch takes a big victory here in episode 13. Boy, these matches. Back and forth until the last second. And all it takes is one big move. Next up, we've got Lex Luger versus Lindsay Dorado. And then Kiryu has to defend his junior heavyweight for the final time in the season against Grand Metalik. And then we've got Scorpio Sky facing his partner, JTG. And then, of course, in our main event, we've got a six-man tag match elimination style collision course match there. And uh, only one person can remain, so it's going to be pretty crazy when Team Cage matches with Team Johnson. You're not going to want to miss that main event. It's the first ever elimination style uh, main event. We've had six-man tags before, but that one's going to be a little bit more spicy. Lex Luger, the big American man, versus Lindsay Dorado, the tiny luchador. Uh, size comparison, I think, is the biggest aspect in this one. Obviously, the muscle-bound Luger is going to be looking for a way to defeat Lindsay pretty quickly here. But not if he can't catch Lindsay jumping over him. Agile like a cat. I think he's supposed to be a leopard. I don't know what he's doing. He, he, he keeps meowing at me backstage. It's kind of weird. <laughs> he's meowing at me in Spanish. And I don't even speak feline. Elbow to the face. Going into a headlock here. Sidestepping. That's what Lex needs to do. He needs to step out of the way. Superman punch. Lindsay didn't like that one. Ooh, Pele kick. All the speed in the world won't help you beat uh, Lex Luger, I don't think. Military press style. You're just trying to snap him in half here with that surfboard. Both guys going for a strike. Suplexed out of the ring. One, Lex Luger's going to hunt him down. Three. When Predator meets Prey here on the undercard. Lindsay might be in trouble. Oh boy, wait a minute. He stopped himself there. Referee's counting so fast. What the hell? Lex is staying on top of his opponent here. This is pretty one-sided as I expected it to be. I think... Uh, Lindsay is a great competitor, but if he's not in a tag match, I don't know how much he can do by himself. Whereas his partner, Grand Metalik, had uh, a lot of success by himself. So it's kind of interesting to find out who is the weak link in the Lucha House Party. Which, of course, is the team of Lindsay and Metalik, who is going to be facing Kiryu in the next match. Cover. One. Lindsay says not yet. Oh, he just got punched right in the mask. Wear your mask, kids, because that's what Lindsay is doing. Lindsay wears a mask even when there's not a pandemic. Close line. Took a lot out of Luger, though. The American classic power slam. Ah! <laughs> and he's flexing and he's screaming. And Lindsay yeah. is going for a jackknife. Oh. Torture rack. Oh. Bending the spine. Oh. Looking for a give up, but Lindsay not going to give up just yet. Has a little bit of life still in him. All the fans of that luchador style looking up to Lindsay here. 
I mean, Lucha House Party, I believe they did start the season as the tag champions. So, a lot has happened since the start. And a lot of craziness has happened here on this season. I mean, we, we saw the end of Andre's undefeated streak here this season, so I truly believe there's still a couple more yeah. surprises left. And if Lince yeah. could get a big win here, that would impress me a lot. I think this would be his biggest singles victory of all time. But he's got to work his way up this ladder. And he's in trouble right here, Lex Luger. Wait a minute! Oh my god, what was that? Who? No, I don't even know what that move was. Holy cow, Lindsay now hitting the edge with these quick roll-ups. And the speed is finally catching up to Lex Luger. I think Luger was before the age of the Cruiserweight and hasn't really seen many of these moves. Doesn't really know what to do about it. Delta Whirl. Pile Dryer! Not much you can do to protect yourself against that! And it was almost over. Wait a minute. Lindsay now getting a little bit desperate, maybe, with that submission. Up against the ropes. Collides right into the big body, goes for a cover, and it's over. That's a meaty man right there. Jeez. I've never seen somebody win a match off of just getting ran into. But when you run full speed ahead into a brick wall like Lex Luger, uh, what do you expect to happen there? Talk about collision course. Apparently that was an elbow. According, according to Fire Pro, that was an elbow. Uh, next up, the Junior Heavyweight Championship is on the line for the final time. Kiryu, can he do it? Can he end the season with that gold that he's been defending week in and week out? Probably the most dominant champion we've had since, I guess, Andre. Uh, just Kiryu has never lost this Junior Weight title. The whole season, he's been hanging on to it. But he's got to beat Grand Metalik, who's had a really impressive singles run here. Kiyu chan Of course, from the Yakuza series, he's going to be fighting like a dragon. Fight! Ring the damn bell! <laughs> this one's going to be quick. I think this one's going to be really fast. Both of these guys have a lot of speed. Of course, Kiryu with that rush style. Wait a minute. Missing the crossbody. Metalik ducking under. In the corner we go. And Kiryu's got to chase him down. Grand Metalik gets the edge there with an elbow to the back. But, oh! He caught him again. Oh boy, Metalik just got slapped into next week. What year is it? He doesn't know. It's 2020, and Kiryu is the junior champion. Getting kicked to the midsection, and now Kiryu with that big overhang punch. Oh gosh, that looks gross, and it's devastating every time he does it. Karana though, striking back. Grand Metalik with that Luchador style, of course. Like I said, he is one half of the Lucha House Party. This is an international match, if you think about it. Cover. I think Kiryu is just trying to slow Metalik down there. Kiryu's got to fight his way back into this match. Been all Metalik early on. <laughs> Face Buster! What? Got the shoulders down, but Kiryu powers out at one. Kiryu finally catches him. 
the champion knocking down the challenger and just driving those elbows into the mask of Metalik. Doing a little bit of that shimmy dance. <laughs> the power of the suit. Here you hoping it's his good look charm here. Ooh, went for an uppercut and whiffed. Missed by a mile. Kiri is going to be in trouble if his moves keep missing, but wait a minute! He didn't miss this one! Dragon Rush! The finisher! And he's going to follow it up with a sliding dropkick. Metalik is back to his feet, though. Slingshot at a thousand miles per hour. Oh! Metalik looking really good right now. We may have a new champion. DDT! Drops him right on his head. And Kiryu's got nowhere to go. Bussa! Shades of Tajiri, the great Japanese cruiserweight. I think Kiryu may have watched a couple tapes of early age SmackDown because he's doing it again! And that's a lot of damage to your face. One, two! Oh boy, he almost got him off of that. There's so much damage in that move. Just knocks you straight into a concussion. And Kiryu with a submission in the middle of the ring. Smart strategy here by the champion, knowing that he has to change the momentum of this match. But wait a minute, slips off the shoulders and Metalik, oh my gosh, around the world we go. From Mexico City to Japan. Yakuza champion Kiryu. Here in the undercard. Pulling at him. Strikes from behind. And again with the submission. Referee asking him to give up and Metalik says, Yes! He said, See! 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 Kiryu somehow made him tap out and wow! What a turnaround there at the last second. Kiryu ends the season as the junior champion. Good for him. That reverse figure four did it. Metalik was looking good. The first 90% of the match. It just shows you how quickly things can turn around here in Fire Pro Wrestling World. Scorpio Sky must face his best friend, JTG. Right here. It's going to be a collision. The Dragon of Dojima wins again. Fight! One of these people right here is going to get a victory. And that's really important. I know it sounds like an obvious statement, but the reason I say it like that it's because JTG and Scorpio Sky have been the most unsuccessful wrestlers here this season. They only have one win apiece. Only one win. This is a 14 episode season. And they each only have one win. It's kind of sad when you think about it. I mean, at one point, Scorpio Sky's career was on the line. That's how poorly he was performing. But finally, they meet each other. They've been tagging together, and they finally have to face each other, and only one can win. And it's really important, I think probably more important for Scorpio Sky here, as he gets hit by a super kick and a cover, and JTG is trying to steal the dreams away from Scorpio Sky early in the match, but runs straight into that strike, and a couple punches to the face might do it. JTG wearing that bandana. For all his homies <laughs> back home here in quarantine, you're not going to want to miss the finale next week. Lockdown. Every match is going to be in a steel cage. It's going to be crazy. Guillotine cutter. ATG with the knee. Glitching out of the ropes. Hacking the mainframe. Breaking the rules of the game. 
He'll do whatever he has to do to win this match. Leg drop. Face buster. Move for move here as it has been all night, all day, and the whole show. We opened this show with a crazy back and forth match. I think all these matches have been so close. And that's a good thing to see at the end of a season as Scorpio Sky trying to recover from that big move. DDT catches him. JTG is down and could be in trouble early here. Scorpio Sky really needs this for his own ego. It's not about points anymore. It's about can he even win? Can he even win a match? He's to Brandon Cutler. <laughs> oh, God. Up the undercard. <laughs> He's like the Broncos, but of wrestling. Think about it that way. Is he even good enough? Oh, spinning clothesline. That'll send you home. That'll bruise your neck. That could break your collarbone. And once your collarbone, once your collarbone is broken, it doesn't recover, believe it or not. It will always be affected for your whole life. And I think we could all be scarred for life if Scorpio Sky doesn't get a win here. Belly to belly! JTG picking him up and looking for a takedown, and he gets it. Woo! Over the head. JTG missing that time. Oh, but he hit that one! You gotta watch out for those big spinning clotheslines. Cutter! Elbow. Drop kick. The trifecta. He hit them all. And Scorpio's guy looking to end this one with the TKO. It could be over. He could finally do it. Oh no! <laughs> JTG is not dead. Whoa! Around the world we go. Where we stop, nobody knows. JTG getting kicked in the face there. What does JTG even stand for? I actually don't know. Are those his initials or is that his whole name? Elbow! That looked gross, by the way. That looked like it hurt. From behind. Wait a minute! He got caught by the Bulldog. Driving that face right into the mat. That can't feel too good. Ooh, killed the world backbreaker, though. Nice move by Scorpio Sky and a spinning kick. Didn't get all of it, though. Looks like he missed the mark on that one, and JTG is now taunting. Going for a big move! Oh my god! He missed! And that's gotta suck! <laughs> Holy poop! He flew right, right over. All the way down. That was nuts, dude. I don't think we've ever seen somebody miss a move like that. Tom Splash! JTG got up, though. Not for long. Scorpio Sky taunting. He thinks he's got this one, and he finally gets all that wheel kick right to the face of JTG. Catches him with the DDT. This could be what he was looking for all of this season. Why didn't he wrestle like this the whole time? Super kick. And JTG is taking all the punishment. Frog splash again. That's got to be it. But wait a minute. He didn't go for a cover. JTG stood up and is just taking all this punishment. He's putting his friend over. It's a work. <laughs> There's no way they didn't agree on this. Because that would have been it. They're just trying to have a good match. They're trying to have fun out there. We want serious competition. Stop goofing off. Somebody tell JTG this is important. TKO! 
And I think we've seen the entire moveset of Scorpio Sky here. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't lose after all that effort. Don't choke. JTG trying to end the dream again. And it could be a nightmare. He's not going for the cover. Somebody tell Scorpio Sky you have to win by a three count here. I forgot the rules or something. I don't know what's happening. Knocks him down again. Striking back. JTG with a move of desperation. And he's gonna win the match. No, he's not. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Face Buster. Scorpio Sky had no choice but to kick out. And the flippy taunt. The taunt we haven't seen in a while from JTG. Thank you for bringing that back. Brooklyn, Brooklyn! <laughs> German almost threw him outside of the ropes there. Frog splash to the spine of his best friend. And this one could go the distance. I'm just now noticing the time. Almost 20 minutes into a 30 minute match. Float over DDT. Powerbomb! Holy poop! He caught him! I can't believe he caught him like that. And he finally gets it. Scorpio Sky finally won a match. <laughs> he finally did it. That makes it two. He has two victories. Oh my lord. <laughs> I don't... I like... Spit all over the place. I couldn't believe he uh, countered that Hurricanrana into a powerbomb there. Next up, our main event. It is the Collision Course six-man elimination match. That means it's not one fall to a finish. So if you see a pinfall or a submission, it's not over. That just means that guy is out of the match. And this could come down to a one-on-one -on -one or a 2v1 or an odd number situation. This one is going to be a little bit wild. Grab your popcorn, because there's a couple monsters in this movie. We've got Team what? Cage versus Team Johnson. Brian Cage, the captain of his side, with Andre and Spawn. And Steel Johnson is the captain of his team, of course, in the red corner on the right side of your screen, which you can't really see right now. But he'll get over there. I know Jake the Snake is on his team, and I believe the third member is Mike Tyson. And they're just going to start off this match with the two captains facing off the big bodies. There he is, Mike Tyson and Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. Kind of like the good guys of the season versus the bad guys. I guess Spawn is kind of a good guy, though. Kind of confusing. He's like an anti-hero. I guess he could be on either side. But this is just how it turned out. These two looking to beat each other up on the outside. The referee's not going to do a count out. Tag to Mike Tyson. The boxer who just had a fight recently, and it was pretty entertaining. Unfortunately, it went to a draw, but I don't think this match is going to. Tyson versus Andre, once again, we saw it before, and it turned out that Andre was just too powerful for Tyson to knock out. Ooh, taking a risk and missing. Tyson now with the knees. To that giant body of Andre. Andre the Giant, who was undefeated for two and a half seasons here in the main event, going up against Jake the Snake. Anybody can get yeah. tagged in. Anybody can eliminate anybody else. And Spawn now legal with the strike. Spawn straight from the comic book pages was selected randomly as all our roster members are. Only one person can go on to the next season, and that person could be either Brock Lesnar or whoever he faces in the finale next week. 
You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be in a steel cage. So it's going to yeah. be pretty crazy. Spawn now going for a... Oh, he was going for that splash. We've seen it before, but Roberts got up quickly. And now Andre got tagged in and just runs over Jake the Snake like a train. Tag to steal Johnson. Oh! Distraction! Use the ropes! And now Andre distracted here. Andre doesn't know where he is. Great teamwork by the, the team on the right side. Steel Johnson might have had a conversation with his team about getting Andre out as fast as possible, if, if that's even a thing that you can do. If you can find a way to eliminate Andre, I say that's where you start. Because obviously Andre is their most dangerous member. Two count there. The 500 plus pound frame of Andre the Giant is an obstacle. All three of those guys are going to have to work together to overcome. This match a little bit slower pace as I expected it to be. Spawn missing the kick. But hitting those punches. Yeah. Leg drop. Take the snake. Has had a he's had a decent season, but I kind of expected more out of him. I believe he was drafted number two in our roster here for the season, so kind of you know thought he would be top billing here. And I think this is actually his first main event match. So you know we all have hopes and dreams, and Spawn just got knocked out there by Mike Tyson. They've had quite a few this season as well. Tyson and Spawn uh, battled for the title, and of course Mike Tyson was champion for a long time. Now getting spun around. He's going to see stars after that one. Both men going for a strike at the same time, and they both missed. I don't know how you could miss Andre. Is the size of a goddamn Greyhound bus. Two count. This is not a one fall match. Reminder, this is elimination style. One team must be completely eradicated. And Andre doing the work here now. With the bear hug, trying to squeeze the life out of Mike Tyson. Tyson doing this for himself. He doesn't need the money. Brian Cage now back in the match. Moonsault. The agility of this large man is so impressive. Week in and week out, I really think Brian Cage is the future of wrestling. Alabama Slamma. Brian Cage with that mohawk. People make fun of him because he spends all his time in the gym, but I mean, it pays off. Look at those muscles. And Sergeant Steel Johnson getting caught by a suplex. Brian Cage, Steel Johnson meeting each other once again here in the ring. The two captains facing off. Power slam. Off the ropes. Spear! Nobody's been eliminated yet. Oh, wait a minute! He's throwing him back in the ring. He doesn't care who's legal. Holy crap. What a spot there. Neil Johnson said oh. throw out the rule book and throw in the phone book. Because oh. somebody better call your mama. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. <laughs> Tag to Jake the Snake with the mind games. I believe that Andre the Giant is afraid of snakes. But he's not afraid of doing the choke slam there in the corner. Big move. We've seen people get knocked out by that move. I believe he knocked out Steel Johnson with that choke slam too. So there's a lot of stories here on both sides of the match. And it all comes to a head right here in the collision course main event. As Andre whiffing on that big strike. Tag to the captain. Off the ropes. Elbow to the face. 
Get the snake in trouble, Drill Claw! The finisher. One, two, and Jake the Snake is the first man eliminated from the match. But it must continue as Team Johnson is now down a member. And that's not going to be good because Andre is still in the match. And I think Andre is the X Factor on that side. He's obviously the largest. And I would say he's the most dangerous and the hardest to beat. One, two, two three, no! Damn it, no! Mike Tyson is by himself, and this is the worst case scenario for Steele Johnson as they just lost their captain. Andre feels like he can eliminate a whole army by himself. Butterfly style suplex catching Mike Tyson, who's all alone, has nobody to tag to. Can he overcome the impossible odds? He just has to knock off one at a time. And Mike Tyson has knocked out 44 people in his career. I think he can knock out three more. And there's the punches. This is what we need to see. Brian Cage is tagged in and Mike Tyson's on top of him right now. Big uppercut. Slap to the face. And here comes those deadly boxing gloves. Oh boy. He's fighting his heart out, but he's been fighting his whole life. 450 splash in the corner, but Mike Tyson was in the ropes. And that positioning may have saved him on with a big combo of kicks there. A Mortal Kombat character now in the fray. One, two, is this it for Tyson? And it is! Damn it, no! Spawn wins for his team, and that was all one-sided. God dang it, dude. The good guys lost. No. <laughs> all right, everybody. That was one hell of a show. I really thought that tag team match would be a little bit more even. But we started off with a huge, crazy back-and-forth war. And we ended with a one-sided battle. Next week, the finale, lockdown. Every match in a steel cage. For the first time ever here on the undercard, the undercard championship will be defended in a steel cage. And it's going to be... Brock Lesnar versus Spawn. The winner of that match. There was a reason we had that six man tag. Because the final winner would be the contender. And I'm just telling you now, it's going to be Lesnar versus Spawn in the finale. One of those two is going to win this season. But I'm sure there will be other great matches that you're not going to want to miss. In a steel cage. It's going to be it's going to be crazy. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you guys next week. We're going to have a season four, so don't worry about it.